Woo, yes, I can feel Leo energy running through my soul. Okay, so I have like a lot of fucking downloads for you guys. So please just hang in there. Do not jump straight to your sign. I know that urge to just, mm, just jump ahead, but don't, okay? Because I have a lot of powerful messages today for you. All right, you guys, happy Leo full moon, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Get ready. This full moon, I've been feeling it for like days so far, okay? Days, let me tell you, darling. And it's a lot. It's a lot of energy. I think we need it. It's a little kick in the ass, a little spanking right in the ass to get us where we want to go, you know? We all need that, that passion kick, you know what I mean? And that's what this is. It's like reigniting us and it's showing us also where we may have some things holding us back in the self-esteem apartment, you know? Department, not apartment, you know what I mean. Basically, hi, my name is Tawny Michelle. Welcome to this Leo full moon video where we talk about this Leo full moon round. Basically, I'm just a horoscope girl here on the internet. I also do like fun tarot and astrology and spiritual stuff, you know? Like I just do a lot of different shit. If you're into astrology, spirituality, and like using astrology to learn more about yourself and your life and what's coming up and how you can better plan things, manifest things, all that jazz, then you would fit in great here. Make sure to subscribe down below. We are weird, different, unprofessional, and just a hot mess over here. And honestly, like I live for it. This Leo full moon video is gonna be a little different than what I normally do, okay? I'm gonna be channeling from the universe, from the divine spirit source, whatever you wanna call it, my intuition, my own craziness. <laughs> I've been channeling actually. I'm gonna be sharing with you what I did channel, okay? I'm not gonna be like channeling right here in front of you. You get what I mean. I'm in a mood, can you tell? But I'm just feeling like alive. I'm like mm, feeling right kicked back into who I really am, you know? And it feels fucking good. Like I'm a Leo rising, so this is like, yes give it to me. Anyway, <laughs> so let's get into it. First things first, this full moon is happening in Leo. The, a full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposite of each other in the sky. They're an opposite sign. So the sun's been traveling through the sign of Aquarius, right? The opposite sign of Aquarius is Leo. And so now the moon is in Leo. So that's making a full moon where the moon and the sun are opposite of each other in the sky. This full moon is aspecting the nodes. So it can feel very faded and karmic. It can be bringing up a lot of stuff from the past. It can also be bringing up themes from end of July into August of 2021, just last year around the Leo new moon. So you may also see some similar themes coming up in your life that came up around that time as well. Please do me a little, little favor and let me know down below if anything that I say in this video resonates with you. It would really, really help me out. It would help this video out. And I would just really love to hear your feedback and your thoughts and what you're feeling for this full moon. It just would love to hear what you're feeling and how you're noticing this come up in your life. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this biatch. So this Leo full moon is reminding us that it's always darkest just before the dawn, okay? That you can't get away from the sun for very long without it making an appearance, right? Leo is ruled by the sun. Because of that, because the sun is strongest in Leo during Leo season of end of July into August each year and, and the summer in the Northern Hemisphere, Aquarius, the opposite sign of Leo is in the darkest part of the year. And so the zodiac and tropical astrology and is basically about the sun's path through light and dark. And so a lot of the signs get a lot of their meanings from the seasons. It's the darkest time of year. It's fucking winter. The sun has like died and is like about to be reborn. You know what I mean? So we've been in the tunnel and it's been dark and it's been that way for a little bit now. And now we have this full moon in Leo. It's like a glimmer of hope. It's like that first little bit of light that we see at the end of the tunnel and we realize we're getting close, right? And so this Leo full moon is really reminding us of that. Like, okay, hey, there's still shadows and stuff that need to be faced. And in fact, this Leo full moon could actually be shining a light to where if you haven't been seeing shit like clearly, and I'm kind of channeling this right now, actually, it's like 
boop, just popped into my head. But if you haven't been seeing things clearly, if you've been struggling, if you've been stressed, if you've been dealing with some kind of issue or whatever the fuck in your life, you've been kind of looking for an answer or a solution or something, you know, to like let you know where to go, what, what the fuck's up. This full moon, this Leo full moon is like, hey, here, it's a little bit of light. So that light comes in and we can kind of see a glimpse of our shadow. We can kind of see like, oh, that's the problem or oh and it has something to do with you it's pointing back to you and so likely it could be like a self-esteem issue a self-worth issue we're going to talk a lot about that tonight as well stubborn pride limiting beliefs old versions of you inner child wounds all of these things are really big with leo and so these are some of the things that you could definitely notice coming up around this time now with the sun moving through the sign of aquarius for the last several well not several weeks but last couple weeks you've been Hum humbled you know the sun is in its detriment it's farthest from home it does not like to fucking be here we've had to take a, a back seat we've had to take a seat backstage where we've had to let others kind of run the show for a little bit in some way shape or form this is metaphorically and realize that we aren't the only special one right and that maybe it's better to collaborate or work in groups or you know our social lives are becoming more of a focus other people are becoming more of a focus we can have a tendency to kind of compare and contrast and and we're just kind of seeing how we fit into like a, a greater thing you know what i mean like it doesn't have to be like a massive group of people but it can just even be like co-workers or a couple friends that you have in your life or one friend that you have in your life you know either way we're kind of in this like me versus them dynamic in a way it doesn't always have to be versus but there is kind of this comparing and contrasting so we've either had to kind of fit in or maybe some of us have found like-minded people or there's been a focus on like-minded people or we've felt kind of outcasted or like we don't quite belong and that's kind of the energy of Aquarius it can kind of feel like I'm not fucking from here so what the fuck <laughs> what is this <laughs> so it's it's been more about others and less about the self less about our desires and our wants and us being special and us being on stage you know it's been more about everybody else and so we may be kind of you know we've been humbled basically right and so I think that you know it's also been about really seeing where we just go along with shit or where our old programming kind of causes us to do certain things to fit in or do certain things to stand out it's kind of a time basically what I'm trying to say this Leo full moon is a time of seeing those things and also getting back to our true authentic power our true authentic selves the lesson of Leo and Aquarius. Lesson of this axis a lot of the times at least one of the major lessons of the Leo Aquarian axis is that when you allow yourself to be yourself, Leo, right? And you embrace self-love in a healthy way instead of just like, you know, the more shadow side of Leo being too self-absorbed or too self-focused or it's all about me or trying to be better than others or whatever the case may be, right? And that's just a few of the shadow things of Leo. I'm not saying every Leo or anything like that has that trait because it's, it's a little more complex than that. But the lesson of this axis is that when we can truly embrace our heart's desires and who we are on a healthy level and like be 100% in love and okay with ourselves, which is not an unhealthy thing or a selfish thing at all. Like when we heal, we fall more and more in love with ourselves. When we heal the wounds of the heart, the heart can be open. So we have love for ourselves and love for other people. And we become more and more authentically who we really are. And therefore we attract our tribe. We attract other people into our lives. We attract the right people because we end up inspiring other people to do the same. Or by us being ourselves, other people are like, I relate to that. I, I see a part of me in you and they want to be around you. They gravitate towards you. They attract towards you. And so that's a massive lesson of this axis. And so we could be seeing this come up. Where in your life have you not been being true to who you are or authentically you? Where have you kind of stepped out of your own perimeters to appease others or to fit in or to even stand out that may not even be you where do you feel outcasted where has your self-worth or your self-esteem been a little bit trampled over where do you have certain insecurities that need to be addressed and when was the last time you touched yourself <laughs> and i and i know like i'm laughing i shouldn't be laughing and i don't mean that in like a sexual way i mean you could 
you could always do that too. But I just like mean truly like been in your body because with the sun in Aquarius, we can get a little disconnected from the body. I have my moon in Aquarius, so this is like really fucking big for me. If you have your moon in Aquarius, this is probably really big for you too, where you can really disassociate a lot of the times from your body and from your surroundings. You can literally live up here and like completely forget about everything else down here. But because the sun is in Aquarius, we can all kind of be feeling that on like a collective scale. And so even if you're not, even if you don't have any Leo or Aquarius in your chart, you can still be feeling that energy. So this is a time of like getting back to your body right? Getting back to who you are authentically, getting back to your heart space and the core of who you are, like this heart space, not this heart space, but this heart space. And really like getting back to self love, embodying who you really are. Embodiment is a massive word that I was getting a few days ago for this energy, like just really embodying the things that you feel, who you are as a person, your character traits, like all of those things, whatever it is that you desire, it is time to embody that. It is time to do some journaling even on who you are authentically. You know, that would be a really great ritual for this full moon. I've been kind of debating if I want to like post a ritual video or not for this full moon, but basically embodiment would be so good. This full moon, such a beautiful full moon to do a ritual for. A ritual, like just throwing some things together isn't really the work. You have to do the work, but a ritual is like representing, like bringing that work into the physical. Like it's kind of like that, the bridge between internal into physical. And so a ritual is like a ceremony, like representing that work, right? And so doing the work yourself to feel the things that you need to feel that are blocking that heart space, that are blocking your courage, that are blocking your authenticity, that's blocking who you really are, that's blocking your self-esteem, dealing with those icky insecurities and self-worth issues and you know self-esteem issues or feeling not good enough or feeling like you don't quite fit in or feeling like you don't even know who you are right now, whatever the case may be, like feeling those things and transmuting them journaling about them. Why do you feel that way? Why is this stuff coming up? And just know that you have to allow yourself to feel those things. That's how it moves, right? Another beautiful thing to do with this Leo full moon is dance. Like fire energy needs to be expressed. It needs to be moved. It's energy in the body that needs to be moved. One of my favorite fucking medicines is dancing. It's something I'm very passionate about. If you follow me on Snapchat or even Instagram every once in a while, I dance a lot because it's, it's a long story. Like I have a long story with dancing. I was bullied really bad for it when I was younger. And so it's important for me. It's been a healing method for me and it helps me connect to my roots my ancestry who i am it moves energy i feel so like i feel like i'm on like a fucking high after i dance like it's just mind-blowing and so it's a beautiful way to move energy to like literally do so many fucking things so that's a really good thing to do for this leo full moon as well but this leo full moon is asking you what makes you special what makes you stick out right? What makes you stick out of the crowd? Uh, and it may be the very thing that you think like actually like is a curse or actually is wrong with you. Like, for a long time, I used to be like so embarrassed when I started YouTube of like my past and how I used to be like a drug addict and like all this crazy shit, right? Like <laughs> my life was fucking crazy um, for how young I was and just like it was just like really fucked up. And I used to be like so fucking scared. And so eventually what happened was I was acting like someone I wasn't because I was like denying like my whole history, <laughs> my whole past uh, that like made me who I was. And, and it just, eventually I got so sick of like acting like someone I wasn't trying to fit into what normal people on YouTube looked like at the time. This was like, quite a few years ago now, but, um, and so eventually, like, I came out, and I was like, look, I'm an addict, like, I used to be a pretty shitty person, <laughs> like, I, I did a lot of crazy shit, and, um, yeah, like, I just fucking shared my truth, and, like, so many people after that were like, hi, uh, you know, and that's, like, a ma massive lesson that goes back to that lesson I was talking about with this axis of, like, once you embrace your authenticity, then people flock to you because they relate, number one, and they're attracted to what you're saying and the energy that you're giving off, the vibes that you're giving off because you're in your true authentic space. 
And so people are like, they appreciate that, they respect that, and they wanna be near you because we always flock to people that we have something to learn from or that we relate to or that we feel like our energy matches or like we are inspired by them. That goes back into that as well. So a lot of the times what you think is like a curse or the thing that's holding you back can actually be the thing that makes you special. Like the thing that you think you're embarrassed of or you wish was different, you can actually use that to your advantage instead of like trying to push it away and hope that it never gets out. No one ever sees it, you know? Anyway, so embracing who you really are, letting your inner child out. This Leo full moon is about having fun, being humorous, laughing, joking, like, doing things that maybe you did when you were a kid, like getting back to that space, releasing old versions of yourself, releasing stubborn pride that's like actually holding you back. I've been like really noticing that in myself lately, like where I become prideful and like people that I like feel like I am inspired by or that I relate to, like I don't ever want to bother them because I'm just like, oh, they're just probably not going to see it or they're probably like not going to like me or something like that or I don't want to like let my pride down and make them think that like you know some stupid shit right I've been dealing I've been having some things like that coming up too but yeah we have these limiting beliefs about who we are and they're holding us back and it's time to fucking move on it's time to move that energy right and you can do that in so many ways now this leo full moon is also a, a lot of times leo full moons can also bring like drama and like just a sense of being bold you know this is a time to be bold to stick out to do to to embody right the thing that you need to like to embody your authenticity to embody the trait that you've been neglecting or the part of yourself that you've been putting off okay so something else that i channeled that i think is a little bit more Mars and Capricorn but that's happening now too that's it's still in Capricorn so it still applies but could also be coming up for you during this time but be the person that takes care of you uh, stop waiting for someone else to come in and save you or to save the day or do it for you like do it yourself you can if you don't think that you can that's only a thought which doesn't make it true, right? Because thoughts are not really, I mean, they're thoughts. You can't grab them, they're not real, right? They're not tangible. So you may be wondering, how else am I gonna do this? How am I gonna get through this? Who's going to help me? Who better to rock this shit than you? So stop putting it off. Stop looking for someone else to save you. Stop waiting for someone else or something else to take the lead or show up. You have to show up for yourself. The only reason you can't is because you think you can't. Thinking that you can't is just a thought as well. It's not tangible, right? You have to be your own cheerleader. You have to step into your power, embodiment, right? That is where confidence comes from. Facing your fears is how we gain confidence, right? And it's funny because it's like the sun, the sun rules Leo and Saturn is opposite Aquarius and Saturn rules fear, you know? Saturn's definitely a planet that can deal with fear and like feeling held back or restricted, etc. And so the sun, you know, there, there are two polarities. So when you face the fear, when you bring light, the sun, to the fear and merge the two, you gain confidence, you grow, Saturn, mature, right? You mature, you grow, you actually find a sense of empowerment and you start actually building your self-esteem and liking who you are. This is a time of like literally shameless authenticity, being shamelessly true to yourself and your heart and not apologizing for it, not apologizing for being honest or for being true to who you are or for loving what you love or desiring what you desire, you know, not apologizing for being you and being in your full authenticity. This could be a, a realization for a lot of people where you're kind of like me and these people or certain people or a certain person in your life without Aquarian energy and the sun in Aquarius, like, Maybe we're not aligned, you know? Like for some people, this could be a time where you're realizing things about yourself that are not aligned with some of the people or environments that you have in your life. And so this could be a time where you are maybe disconnecting from those things, you know? This is definitely a time where you're like really seeing 
and getting real about what's helping you, what's adding to you to help you grow and make you a better person. What are these things giving you in your life? You know, are, and, and also integrity. This is a time of integrity too. And really thinking about your life and the people that you surround yourself with. Because if you're surrounding yourself with people that don't treat you with respect or don't treat you with like worth, like you're worth something, then you don't feel like you're worth something or else why would you have those people around you? So that issue reflects back to you that you have a self-worth issue. To start healing this issue, you have to start healing it within you and start healing, like stepping into your power and also not allowing people to treat you like that and getting people like that out of your life. You know, because when you finally feel good about yourself and when you are standing in your authenticity and in your power, you won't attract people like that. You won't attract people that are treating you like you're less than or like you don't matter or like you're not worth something or disrespecting you. So if you are allowing that around you, then you are also allowing it within you. You're also doing it to yourself, basically, inside of you. Like you're thinking that way about yourself already. And even if you're not aware of it, even if it's subconscious. And so this could be a time of walking away from people and environments that no longer serve you because they're not authentic to who you are. They don't match your energy deep down, right? Because deep down, your soul knows that it's worthy. The only reason that you're not is because you don't think you should be or because you think lower of yourself in some way. So those are a lot of the messages that I was getting for this full moon in Leo. Definitely let me know down below if any of that relates to you or if any of those messages were for you or that you needed to hear messages that you needed to hear. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. We are going to get into the 12 sign horoscopes now. Um, your rising sign will resonate most because that is what I'm reading these for. So make sure to watch your rising sign. All right, starting with you, Leo, since you are the star of the show, this is gonna resonate more if you're a Leo rising. So Leo, if you didn't listen to the first half of the video, you need to go fucking do that because I'm a Leo rising and I've been channeling a lot of messages, but I've also, I also shared a lot about what some of the lessons I've been learning, which are probably very similar to lessons that you've been learning somewhere in your life as well. So definitely you don't want to miss because the whole first part of your the video could basically like be your horoscope as well. So anyways, uh, this full moon Leo for us is such a big fucking deal. This is a time of really getting back to who we are and also seeing how we've grown and changed uh, since literally like end of July, early August of 2021. And some of the similar themes uh, from then could be coming back up around this time. We could be thinking about our appearance. We could be thinking about how much we've grown or matured since then. Um, but there also seems to be, even though there's like such a large focus on this self and self-love and authenticity and getting back to self, getting back to who we really are at our core and getting back to our heart space, getting back to our authenticity and just being courageous and embracing and embodying like who we truly are. There's also this energy with the sun opposite in Aquarius where we're dealing with a lot of social stuff or relationship-based stuff or friend-based stuff. So this is a time where we are really learning a lot as well in terms of our health, our work, our day-to-day -day routines, our day-to-day -day lives, schedules, responsibility, accountability, and just like really showing up. Like the flux right now for Leo has changed so much. It's like, yes, responsibility, accountability, like, you know, getting serious and doing the damn thing and really like not having time or tolerance for people that are just like, just don't get it, right? But that could also be what is making us feel outcasted because, and, and, or some of us at least, because maybe we're feeling like people just aren't understanding us or aren't on the same page as, as us, whether in a relationship, a friendship, or just significant people within our lives or even coworkers, you know? It could just really feel like we're doing a lot in terms of maturing and growing up and like learning lessons um, and trying to 
uh, change our lifestyle, change our habits, our day-to-day -day habits that hold us back and all of this. And it just kind of seems like maybe others aren't as motivated. And so what I've really noticed with Mars moving through the sixth, at least for me, is I've become really intolerant of bullshit or other people's lack of motivation. It's like, really, like, am I the only one that wants to go anywhere in life, in my own life? Like, what the hell, you know? It can be, it can bring up some new energies uh, that, you know, because I'm normally not like that at all. Uh, like, you know, live your best life, live and let live is normally my motto. But uh, yeah, I've been like really fucking intolerant <laughs> lately. Um, and I know it's some shit that I probably have to work through, but I'm just wondering if any of you guys have noticed that too, because it's interesting. But I think that you know, with this Aquarian energy opposite to us, we could be really looking at our social lives and our connections in a new way, how we connect with people, how we relate to, with people, or get out there and meet new people or something along those lines. That could also be it as well. And so there's this kind of like dynamic right now between self versus other. And are the people in our lives really authentically aligned with who we are? Do they understand us? Do they get us? Or are we feeling like there's some kind of you know, there's some kind of division there, divide there. Like division's more of a harsher word than what I'm looking for, but it can just feel like we're not on the same wavelength, basically. It's how I usually describe it. Like, almost like you're talking to people and every time you talk to someone, it goes over their head. Like they just don't fucking understand it. And you're like, yo, like what the hell? But it's happening like so much to where it's like you can't even really talk to anybody because no one's understanding it. You know what I mean? And that's been the case for like 99% of my life. Um, so uh, it can be kind of hard right now to either relate to others or find others that relate to you. So that could be it or it could be very easy to feel like a, a loss of identity. Um, the, like the last few weeks, like questioning who you are, questioning your self-esteem, questioning your self-worth, am I good enough, am I, you know, all of these things because the sun is farthest from home, it is opposing us, and so it can feel like almost like an attack on our self-esteem, but this Leo full moon coming in is really bringing this like renewal energy, this, this fire energy back into us where it's like, oh, this is who I am. This is where I'm comfortable. This is what we're doing. I'm taking the fucking lead now. Move over. Like, it can literally feel like that where we're taking charge. We're getting back into, like, our humorous selves. Like, that little bit of light at the end of the tunnel that I talked about earlier in the video is literally giving us life. It's like, yes, I've been reborn. I'm Jesus, whatever. Like, get out of my way, you know? Um, and we are just feeling resurrected from the ashes. I would say if you're a Leo rising especially uh, and your rising is at the end of Leo, so I would say anywhere from 25 to 29 degrees of Leo, you're going to be feeling this intensely. This is going to be definitely a time where you're feeling fired up or where there's a lot of focus coming in on you who you are, your appearance, your body, you know, how you relate with others, how you show up in the world, authenticity, self-love, you know, humor, and the heart space, you know, where do you need to heal your heart or where do you need to let go of an old version of you that's like no longer aligned with who you are. Like you could be seeing yourself in a lot of different perspectives now that you don't normally see yourself in. And that's really the point of Aquarius season. It's a time where we are seeing ourselves in new ways and it can feel a little bit like like we're being, like we're dissolving because we're kind of like, wait, I'm seeing myself from this way, but I'm also this way, but I'm also that, but I'm also this. And we're doing this through the perspectives of others or through meeting others. And so it can literally feel like, how am I all these different pieces like you know like how am I all this right so then who am I you know and so it could literally be it can feel a little bit like an ego death or I, I don't know I don't want to say it's like that extreme like not that the ego ever dies anyway but it can feel a little bit like an attack on the ego or a little bit like a loss of identity or just questioning ourselves a little bit more but this Leo full moon I feel like is a reflection on these things, but also kind of restoring who we are, restoring what's important to us, restoring like what we're doing. And like, it's, it's a time of getting back to who we are. You know what I mean? Um, and we could be feeling a little bit nostalgic or reflecting on the past a little bit more. And there could be some endings as well in our lives, whether in our lifestyle 
or our relationships, some people in our lives. Like this could definitely be a, a pretty big ending happening here for some Leos as well, or a challenge that's coming up that's really making us think about our past and our future, our, our personal life and our public life, um, and who we are and how we show up in the world and self versus other and all of these things are really big right now for Leo rising. So definitely let me know down below if you're Leo rising and any of this rings true or you start seeing any of this unfold, the best way to watch your horoscope is to first watch it, <laughs> watch your rising sign, and you know take notes or come back to the video a few times to see if it happens, and then come back in a couple weeks to see how it all played out and what you gathered from it and the lessons that you can take with you and what you learned about yourself from it. So anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching, Leo. I really appreciate it, and we are gonna move on to Virgo. So Virgo, darling, this Leo full moon is happening in your 12th house sector which is the house of endings and all of that good shit. So <laughs> what this means, Virgo, is you are <sighs> releasing old versions of you, kind of like a, a little similar to what I just said for Leo, but a little different, um, uh, more focused on endings, more focused on release releasing purging. This could be a time where you are really focused on the past or um, where you are even feeling a little bit more isolated or secluded. Uh, this could be a time showing you where you hide certain aspects of yourself or where you have these subconscious needs or desires or uh, need to feel special even that you haven't been addressing or that you haven't been looking at. And uh, this could also be coming in where co-workers and social situations involving work or co-workers or your day-to-day -day life in some way where maybe you're feeling like there's a disconnect there or maybe you're feeling a little bit outcasted or maybe you've been feeling like you've been kind of overlooked or unappreciated. And so this could be bringing up a subconscious need for appreciation or a subconscious need for validation, um, even a subconscious need or a subconscious issue of feeling unworthy in some way. And so those are some other things that you could be seeing come up, but it's like, where do you maybe hold back, hide or repress your desires or repress certain parts of yourself that are special that you, haven't wanted to look at because like this would definitely be true for Virgo Risings, what I said earlier about a blessing and a curse and how there may be something about yourself that you've been trying to hide or keep in the closet because you think it's like a curse or it's embarrassing or whatever the case may be, but really it's like a blessing, right? Really it's what makes you special, it's what makes you different and so this could be getting a light shined on it at this time. This could also be a time where you have subconscious pride, where there could be a light kind of getting shined on these shadows for you, where you have this subconscious pride kind of holding you back. And um, because with Leo in the 12th for Virgo, a lot of the times what I notice uh, is that Virgo actually can be very, um, <laughs> very into itself, not necessarily in looks or any of that. I mean, not that they can't be, but more so about how they, how, like what they know. They can get very like, uh, <laughs> they can get very Leo almost about what they know and like how, how they can fix things and how they can like solve problems and this, that, and the other. Like, and uh, they can like really start feeling themselves for that. And that's not an issue, you know what I mean? That's not a problem, but Leo's in the 12th, and so it's kind of subconscious. So a lot of the times, like Virgo risings, like won't realize it um, because there's like almost an energy or like a need to like repress any Leo energy uh, because it's like Virgo rising. It's like, oh no, I should be humble and this, that, and the other. But in the back, there's like this Leo energy, like it still exists, it's still in your chart, you know what I mean? Whether you have anything in it or not, it's still there and it's still playing out. And so, what have you been repressing? You know, are there inner child wounds? Are there old versions of you? Are there limiting beliefs or stubborn pride or uh, desires or certain authentic traits to who you are that you've been like holding off or repressing in some way, shape or form? If so, then 
they may be coming up for this Leo full moon. And like I said, possibly something with work, habits, day-to-day -day routines, schedules, health, etc. that could also be coming up. So that is what I'm seeing for Virgos. So Libra, this Leo full moon's happening in your 11th house of your social life, friends, gains, um, also your ambitions and desires for your life and networking and things like that. So this could be a massive time for Libra where you're seeing these themes come up in your life. Maybe you are connecting with other people more, whether in real life or on social media. Maybe you're a part of some kind of group or some kind of class or some kind of like you know, dance thing or yoga thing where there's some kind of like networking going on. Also, Libra, I also see that this could be like something fun that you're doing with your friends. Like maybe you're trying to spice up your life with friends. Maybe you're going to some kind of event or, you know, something like that where like you're going with like a group of people or a group of friends. So that could also be the case as well. Like just, you know, having fun and doing fun stuff with other people. So this is also a time where you could be ending certain things like that or ending certain friendships because maybe you're feeling like you guys are just not on the same page or you're just not in alignment. You know, maybe you're, maybe you don't really feel special when it comes to your ambitions or your social life or something like that. And this Aquarius energy in the fifth, it's like, you know, you have something different or outside of the norm, like you're passionate about something different or outside of the norm, and maybe you feel like it's you're not fitting in in some way or it's not fitting in with what other people want or what other people desire. And so those are some ways that this could play out, but either way, it's kind of like bringing up certain certain dramas and uh, conflicts regarding friends and your social life and your ambitions and your desires for those things and where you may need to embrace authenticity, where you need may need to see what's special about you and your ambitions and your desires and not allow other people to walk all over you or step on you or use you or disrespect you just because you know, you're different or your art's different or your desires are different or what you what you're passionate about passionate about is different or your relationship's different or whatever the case may be. There's some kind of social issue here basically or it could just be like your ambitions or something like that. But either way, it's definitely a time where you're wanting to be seen more, where you're wanting to stick out more, where you need to embody your authenticity. You need to embody the weird, special things about you that make you stick out and where you need to come into your, your own authentic truth, your own authentic individuality. Own your talents and showcase that to whoever you have to, network with whoever you have to, um, but that is basically what is coming up for you for this Leo full moon Libra. It is definitely a time of embodiment and authenticity in terms of friends, social groups, networking, and your ambitions. And so it could also be a time where you see some gains coming in or you have the chance to be in the spotlight and connect with other people uh, in some way as well. So definitely let me know down below though if any of that's true, if you see any of that happening in your life, I'd love to know. And we are gonna move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this Leo full moon is happening in the 10th house of career, public image, what you put out there to the world, what you want to achieve in the world, your long-term goals, your future goals, where you're headed in life, your path, you know, all of these like big picture things that you have for your life that you're trying to achieve or that you want to achieve eventually. And so this Leo full moon is really shining a light on that like okay um where are we what do we need to do there's been a large focus on your home your family your past your roots your personal life and how weird that's all going so far and so now this leo full moon is like look i just want to shine i want to get away i want to do my own thing i want to be out in the world i want to be focusing on my goals i want to be focusing on my career I want to be focusing on who I really am and I want to show that to everybody, right? Like, I want to fucking shine in terms of my life, my goals, and where I'm going in life, right? So some of you could also experience this as an ending or a moment of closure, a time of closure regarding old goals or old visions for your future, or old, an old career path or something like that. Like, this could be a career change or... Um, maybe you're moving for a new job or something like that. 
And so either way, it's kind of involving like your professional life versus your personal life. Uh, what's going on kind of behind closed doors versus what you're showing to the public. And so this could definitely be a time where you're feeling very public or where something um, where something goes public. This is also a time of like your reputation, you know, your reputation could get brought up and in some way. I feel like for, I mean, it depend. it would kind of depend on if it would be like positive or negative. I mean, like really anything that gets brought up, you could probably somehow use to your advantage. Uh, there's always a way to do that for the most part. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, this could definitely be a time where you're really outspoken, you're feeling very loud, you're feeling very bold, and you're wanting to get out there in the world and you're wanting to show yourself and you're wanting to really, uh, you know, go after what you want. Or it's a time where you're kind of ending something and you're seeing a new vision for your future and you're closing out an old cycle. So definitely let me know down below, Scorpio, uh, which one it is for you. I'd really love to hear your feedback and and what you have to say about it and what you're noticing. Uh, so please do that. And moving on to Sag. So for Sag, this Leo full moon is happening in your ninth house, lucky animals. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but so this Leo full moon in the ninth, like I love the ninth house because it's just so optimistic. Like the energy of the ninth is like, it's gonna be okay. Like it's, <laughs> just kidding it's gonna be okay you know we are going to we're going on a journey we are um you know we're doing something right it's just like all the doors open with the ninth house it's like anything's possible right and so this full moon in your ninth house although it's just a full moon you know which i mean it is kind of a dramatic full moon but still this is an energy of like okay like i see my potential and where maybe you've been playing small uh, maybe it's time to go big or go home kind of energy, you know. This Leo full moon is like, okay, how far have I come? Where do I still need to go? What do I still want to do? This could be a time of learning something new. You could see a lot of educational themes coming up. Maybe you're wanting to go back to school or maybe you're changing your major or maybe you're graduating college, you know, like something like that uh, could be brought up around this time. This could also bring up themes or topics of travel. Um, and, you know, wanting to just get out of the ordinary, get out of the day-to-day -day shit that is bothering you. So you may need to get away, you know, like you may need to take a little bit of a, of a trip somewhere and get away for a little bit. But this is a great time for really reevaluating what you believe, your outlook on the world, uh, your mental state, and kind of just, you know... <laughs> taking a break and being a little bit more optimistic and learning something new. Like those are the big ones with a full moon in the ninth house. It's like seeing what's really possible, seeing what you can achieve and uh, yeah, knowing like, you know, it's going to be okay. And so it really is like a light at the end of the tunnel for you, Sag. So alrighty, let me know if that resonated down below. I would really love to hear your feedback, Sag, and how you're feeling this full moon energy. We are gonna move on to Capricorn. So for Capricorn, this full moon is happening in your eighth house sector of other people's money, debt, resources, finances, like shared finances and resources. And so this could be a time where you are having a lot coming up in terms of those topics where you, it's kind of like a time where you could also be noticing like certain things coming up from the shadows or certain things that were kind of hidden coming up as well or coming to light. Uh, you know, things that maybe you haven't been embracing even though it's like, even though it's who you are, like things that you've been hiding, you know, could be coming to the surface, things that, and also how your money and resources or shared money and resources and obligation, like financial obligations, how that affects your self-esteem and like really getting back to who you are and your self-esteem in a way in, in some in in relationship with money and resources and exchange because the eighth house is really an exchange of energy and so it's really bringing up exchanges of energy financial affairs or like energetic affairs in general and so this leo full moon could be highlighting that 
Uh, it could be highlighting where you know maybe you are you've been wanting to make an investment or maybe you made an investment or some kind of financial decision back at the end of July or early August and that's coming back around right now. Uh, but either way, this is just, this is money. <laughs> it's about money, you know, I think you get the point. It's about financial affairs and money. Sometimes the eighth house can rule like the taboo and like hidden things and stuff like that. And I already kind of talked about the hidden part, but, but yeah, I'd like to know if you're noticing any of those themes, Capricorn down below, like what you are noticing coming up in your life, what you do see coming up for you. I'd really love to hear your feedback. Um, and yeah, we're going to move on to Aquarius. So Aquarius, this full moon for you is happening in your seventh house. So this is very much about other people, relationships and significant relationships within your life. Where have you maybe not been being authentic in these relationships? Where have you maybe been a little bit too caught up in other shit or caught up in yourself or caught up in whatever? And, you know, maybe it's a time of like getting back to what you truly desire in relationships or what you truly want in relationships for a lot of aquarius risings this could be closure in a significant relationship in your life or this could be an ending or change in some kind of relationship or it could just be bringing up the dynamics with you and significant people within your life and if you are feeling a little bit like outcasted or different or not special in terms of those relationships like if you're not feeling worthy or if they're not treating you right or whatever the case i mean that's not going to be for everybody but either way it's a dynamic between self and other and so where are where do you need to be authentic in your relationships and where do people in your life need to be authentic in terms of dealing with you you know and so this is really bringing up a question of like worthiness and how you like to be seen in relationships how you like to where you're comfortable in relationships and uh you know authenticity and and you know desire in terms of relationships and so those are a lot of the the big themes that you could see at this time and you know with all this stuff in your 12th in capricorn you could also just be noticing a lot of like old conditioning coming up in shadow behavior and we talked a lot about that in your February horoscope for the month um, so if you haven't seen that definitely go watch it but yeah you could be noticing a lot of subconscious subconsciously driven patterns or behaviors coming up as well uh, so anyway so that's basically what I'm seeing for you Aquarius definitely let me know down below if any of that is coming up for you and what you are noticing in your life I'd really love to hear how you guys are feeling this leo full moon energy so please comment and let me know down below so moving on to pisces so for pisces this leo full moon is happening in the sixth house of your day-to-day -day routines your day-to-day -day shit <laughs> the maintenance that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep up with your lifestyle and live the life you want to live so that can be diet exercise like health related shit that can be work related shit meetings and you know work responsibilities that can be like chores to keep up with like your house or whatever you know those kinds of things and so with this leo full moon happening here this is a time of like getting back to what you desire like a lifestyle habits and routines that feel authentic to you and that make you feel good that spice up your life that bring a bit of fun that bring more authenticity that bring um you know more pleasure and desire within your within your day-to-day -day routines and so this could definitely be a time where you're kind of noticing these things where you know this could also be some drama in your work department or with work or co-workers as well for pisces risings um, so that could be something that comes up or where maybe you're feeling a little bit outcasted in terms of work or different or something like that and this full moon is coming around and you're just wanting to feel special and worthy in your day-to-day -day life and routines. And so it would be really, really great to um, get back to day-to-day -day routines and schedules that bring you a sense of self-love and that like build your self-esteem and self-confidence. That would be like the best way to use this energy, Pisces. So that is what I'm seeing for you. Definitely let me know down below if that resonates. I'd really love to hear your feedback, Pisces, how you're feeling this full moon energy. Um, and yeah, let's move on. Alrighty, so for Aries Risings, this full moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, fun, um, dating, and you know, where you 
where you find your passion and your joy, anything that brings you joy. You know, it can be sports, it can be art, you know, creating something, whatever the case may be. Uh, the fifth house also rules over sexuality as well. So with the full moon here, you can see a lot of these topics coming up. And the fifth house also rules over children and f fertility as well. So this could definitely be a time where you see these different topics coming up in your life, where it's time to get back to like a, the, a Leo full moon in the fifth house is definitely a time of getting back to what you love, getting back to, you know, your desires, your passions, why you started, you know, like if you've been like dealing with burnout or something like that, like this would be like getting back to why you started, you know, getting back to what you really love about what you're doing, your desires, your passions, etc. Um, so that's really what this full moon is about, you know? Who are you authentically? How do you express yourself? How can you express yourself in an authentic way? You know, all the different ways and forms of expressing the self, you know, can be highlighted with this Leo full moon. And just really getting back to a sense of joy, getting back to doing things that make your heart feel alive and that make you feel fired up and passionate and, you know, uh, yeah, like getting back to a sense of desire. And that could also play out, you know, with dating or your sex life or your romantic life with your partner. You know, this could be a really great time of getting back to those things as well. So yeah, Aries, definitely let me know down below uh, if you are seeing these themes come up. Uh, you could also see themes of your friends, your social life coming up as well. Maybe you're wanting to do something um, fun and exciting uh, with friends or other people, or maybe you're wanting to kind of get away from doing a bunch of stuff with other people and you're wanting to do things that you love, that bring you joy, you know, something like that. So definitely let me know down below how you're feeling this energy, Aries. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback on how you're feeling this full moon. So moving on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this full moon is happening in the fourth house of home, family, private life, personal life, and your roots, your foundations, your ancestry. And so this could be bringing up a lot of nostalgia for Taurus. You could be very connected to your inner child during this time. You could be very connected to your childhood, you know, and uh, what you love to do as a child and all of those types of things, you know, where you come from. And also like a feeling of worthiness, desire, self-esteem in terms of your family and your living situation. Do you have that? Do you feel like you are um, you know, special in terms of your family, your living situation, your childhood? Did you feel worthy in those, you know, in those areas of life? And if not, this could be a time of really unraveling that or some kind of closure on that, you know? And so this could also be bringing up a topic of your parents or uh, your, your family in some way uh, that you could be kind of dealing with as well during this full moon. So, so yeah, it's definitely bringing up these different topics of your family and your personal life, Taurus, and also the past, and you could just be feeling very nostalgic around this time and really reflecting on a lot uh, to do with your past and stuff. So definitely let me know down below, Taurus, uh, how you are feeling these energies, and if that resonates, I'd really, really love to hear your feedback on this. And we are gonna move on to Gemini. So. For Gemini, this Leo full moon is happening in the third house of communication and a bunch of other weird shit. Uh, basically, like short travels, communication, the mind, and kind of connecting with others, like people, places, and things in your immediate environment. So I've seen this be friends a lot too. Like it can bring up a topic of friends, like immediate friends that you talk to on a day-to-day -day basis or people that you talk to on a day-to-day -day basis and environments and places in which you visit on a day-to-day -day basis. So this could be a time where you are wanting to venture out more or explore your surroundings a little bit more. Maybe you are doing something fun or going to some event with a friend or going to a concert or you know something like that. It's like you're wanting to do more outside or around you in your community. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more like, uh, you're feeling more like in a fun loving mood and um, you're wanting to have fun basically and you're wanting to explore your surroundings and so this could be a time also where your outlook and your perception is changing on something and how you think or go about something could be changing as well in terms of uh, your belief systems and the people in your life you're just kind of like I just need a break and I just want to like 
you know, get a fresh perspective on things and I need to like step away from it for a second and like go have fun or go to this concert or go to the show or, you know, go to this place, like whatever the case may be. I really see that for Gemini Risings. This could also bring up like uh, some news or a conversation or a short trip. Uh, topics of those things as well. So definitely let me know how you see this full moon coming up, Gemini. Also, the third house can rule siblings and relatives, so those could other uh, bleh, <laughs> that could also be other topics that come up. Also, neighbors. So, alrighty. So moving on to Cancer rising. So for Cancer risings, this full moon is happening in your second house of your income, your resources, your things, your possessions, uh, your values, your priorities, and so all of these things are likely topics that are going to come up for this full moon or that are already coming up for this full moon. So you could definitely be noticing that you are more focused on your priorities, you're more focused on money situations or your income, how you're bringing in income. This is a time where you may be really reevaluating what you love and if what you love, you know, what you love in terms of your financial situation and if that's aligning. So basically it could be a time where you are getting more authentic about your alignment in terms of your income, like and your worth and your self-esteem. And so this is tying into this somehow where it's like have your values or priorities actually matched your worth or your self-esteem is what you're being paid matching your self-esteem. Um, or money that you, sh is money that you share with other people working out you know there could be like an issue with money that like shared money or shared resources shared finances where it's like okay yeah this isn't going how i thought it was like i need to have my own money or i i want to get back to having my own like being able to do what i want with my own money something like that there could definitely be this kind of financial push and pull or this dynamic between what's mine and what's theirs and so those kinds of things could be coming up at this time this could also be a time where there are certain endings, you know, involving those things as well. And you're really like reflecting and reevaluating on what your priorities are and what's important to you and what's authentic to you as well and what you need, like, you know, what you authentically need in terms of, you know, living and in terms to live the lifestyle that you want to live. And so those things could be coming up as well. So let me know down below, Cancer, if any of that resonates. I'd really love to hear your feedback and what you are feeling for this full moon and how you're feeling it. Let me know down below. And that concludes this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my next one.